Top of the morning to you. Welcome to another episode of MATC Now. Today we're going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day by learning about the various cultures here at the school and the benefits MATC offers. So stay tuned to meet a couple of innovative graduates, learn about Latinx, and see a fun way to make St. Patty's Day themed waffles. Day week and we are here to celebrate and learn all about the different cultural differences here at MATC. If English is not your first language or if you speak more than one language, MATC offers a variety of support for its diverse cultures. It also offers a wide variety of benefits and services including multicultural student services and bilingual services. With me today is my co-host, Mariela Codines Munoz, an instructor here at MATC in the television production program. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mariela. Thank you for having me, Hannah. Um, so why don't uh, you tell me a little bit about how working at MATC has benefited your life? Wow, it has changed my life. I love it. I was an MATC student one day many years ago. I, became, I got the opportunity to become an instructor and I love it. I can be a role model for other students here at MATC. It's wonderful that you're able to give back to the institution that helped you in your career. Correct. Can you tell me about what cultural experiences you have encountered here at school uh, or in the workplace? What I love from MATC and from that workplace is the diversity. We are a diverse community. I, I have friends from all over the world and I can you know, learn of a different different cultures and at the same time uh, working in the television television industry it's like a plus because also you can share other culture that's wonderful So MATC is a very hands-on college, which allows students to really get the chance to experience different fields. Student producer Ashley Levac talked with a photography instructor here at MATC to get an inside look at what the photography department is really like. But first, let's meet two MATC student entrepreneurs peddling a tech-savvy spin on the classic cycle and learn how their friendship is carrying them down the road to success. MATC students Bryce Killebrew and Willie Alexander found the perfect vehicle for their passions when they founded New Way Innovations, a startup business selling e-bikes. We just took, you know, what we liked and what we loved to do and turned it into something, you know, real. It's mixing business and exercise together, and that's one of our favorite two things, so why not uh, go up in that lane? An electric bike is um, basically a regular bike, but it's powered by a motorized um, piece or device. Uh, this particular device allows you to um, propel, you know, at, a, at an accelerated rate. From the time they first met, Bryce and Willie have dreamt of owning a business together. Me and Will became friends uh, back in high school. We actually talked about, you know, entrepreneurship a lot and actually owning and starting our, own, starting our own business. You know, that conversation sparked off like a really, really true, true friendship. One of the businesses that we uh, started in high school um, was a lawn care company. And um, that didn't go so well because lawn care service, school hours, they almost the same hours. Um, looking back, that, uh, that business failed miserably. I'm allergic to fresh cut grass and I sneeze like heck. So 
that was a big issue and he always giggled at me when he see me over there wiping my eyes. But it was something that, that we really enjoyed um, as far as the process goes. Um, we learned a lot and uh, a lot of those things that we learned uh, during that uh, particular time, uh, we utilized it uh, towards this uh, specific endeavor. Coupling their first-hand experience starting a company with skills they were learning in business classes at METC, the young entrepreneurs were eventually able to see their dedication pay off, bringing their first e-bike, the Gen Z, to market in October of 2020. Well, we spent two years learning, researching, you know, um, dedicating our time and energy to um, perfecting uh, what it is that we will bring into the world today. When we uh, actually came down to the point where we had our prototype done, ready and finished and to showcase to the world, um, it was an amazing feeling, you know, because we worked really hard. It feels really good when you have something that you worked hard for and when you actually see it in person, it could almost, almost make you tear up. Developing their first product taught them a lot about collaboration and friendship. One of the biggest things that I learned uh, was the power of, of teamwork. You know, uh, being able to, uh, to, uh, to have someone uh, that you can count on, you know, uh, in business, to be able to have, uh, you know, an individual that you can look toward, uh, whether that's for, you know, inspiration, you know, motivation, or teaching each other uh, uh, different things. It's like a yin and yang, you know, like you need balance in the world. Um, like I say, I'm the little guy, he's the big guy. He knows what the big guys want, I know what the little guy want. <laughs> Most of all, starting New Way Innovations taught them how to define success for themselves. Success is a, is a daily thing. Um, you have to be successful every day if you want to be successful in life. To make a to-do list, if you knock some on your to-do list out, it could be brushing your teeth and making your bed. If you knock that out and you feel successful, you had a successful day. My advice to um, the younger entrepreneurs out there would be to keep going. You know, uh, we often get so discouraged by whether or not someone is gonna like our product or like our service. You have to keep going and you have to do the work. It's not failing unless you quit. Do something and don't execute it in the right way a million and one times. But a million and second time you do it, you're gonna execute. It's about getting it done and keep pushing. You know, cause who stay, whoever stays focused the longest is gonna, gonna win. MATC has multiple different programs. The photography department is a very hands-on option for students. So in the first uh, first couple semesters, uh, it is a it is a two-year program. In the first couple semesters, students are um, they're going to be using their own uh, DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras, and uh, and then as they move on into, into the program. Uh, they can uh, have access to uh, some of the school's cameras that we uh, have. Uh, so we've got phase one digital back cameras at the school. Uh, these are um, uh, high-end professional quality cameras that are industry standards in certain uh, circles. Um, and uh, that gives the students a hand-on experience with these uh, very high-end uh, expensive cameras. Uh, so you, some of the camera systems are 30 grand and above. Um, so being able to access these and, and um, work these cameras is a huge benefit to all of our students. Uh, there is also one class uh, called View Camera Techniques, and that is another type of camera that they uh, do use in that class, and that, uh, that camera can be uh, checked out from the school. Uh, that camera is like one of those old time cameras where you got the, the lens, the bellows, and then you got you know, the, the film uh, in the back. Uh, we still do teach that class because there's still a lot of applications that can be applied with the um, um, the ideas and uh, fundamentals of those cameras, and they can still be applicable today, even though that particular camera is actually film-based. Uh, but there is a way to put a digital back onto the back of those cameras and uh, operate them as a digital camera. So yeah. when the students first come into our program, they kind of, um, 
are kind of taken aback, I think, sometimes by how uh, rigorous our program actually is. I think a lot of people, they come in, they're like, oh, photography, that, you know, it'll be easy and fun. And um, I think it definitely is fun. And I think they definitely have fun with it. But then they realize that it's not maybe as easy or as kind of like a skate through kind of program or degree. Um, we are pretty intense um, and uh, we're trying to build up our students to be the best uh, that they can be within this industry. I'd say it's kind of a community. Um, we are kind of uh, a, a little family, I guess you could say in some ways. Um, it's uh, there's this kind of uh, cohesiveness that's within uh, in our students and our faculty. Um, um, and you know, I think that a lot of times we try to help each other the best that we can and the students try to help each other as well the best that they can so that, um, you know, they can try to stay motivated or, you know, um, compare notes, right? Um, go out and shoot together, you know, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so obviously with COVID, it's a little bit more difficult, but in the past, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, planned trips and things like that, that we would go out and do like a photo safari or, you know, just kind of, um, you know, go out together and kind of just, just do it. Sometimes if you're feeling in that rut or get that writer's block kind of thing with photography, um, sometimes just grabbing your camera and going out and just doing it, you know, uh, will help get you break that, uh, that, right, that photography block. It definitely looks like the photography department takes pride in how hands-on they are. The students are really able to get a feel for what it's like working with expensive and professional cameras. In light of celebrating MATC's cultural diversity, joining us today is Dr. Maria Solano, who is going to talk a bit about the vast cultural diversity here at MATC and the various benefits and accommodations MATC offers multicultural and bilingual students. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Solano. Thank you for having me. So to start us all off here today, what benefits and services does MATC offer multicultural students? Um, I'm very happy to let you know that um, MATC is having a very conscious about creating an um, environment of diversity. We have a lot of students um, that they have a sense of belonging because we are um, in, in creating this environment of uh, different uh, cultures. Um, for example, I know that um, we have been um, creating or we have uh, courses, for example, on the South Campus where um, a class, uh, students can take a class all together in uh, Arabic and Spanish and English in the same class. So uh, this is very important for the students to feel that they belong, that there's somebody who really understands the culture that we really understand and we, we are there for them. This is the best benefit that they can get. That's wonderful. Can you speak a little bit about um, some advice you would have? Uh, if some people have trouble expressing their cultural heritage uh, at school, do you have any advice for them? Yes, uh, sometimes, and it happens, uh, it happened to me too, sometimes what we need to understand is learn more about our own culture. Sometimes we we don't remember or we forget some things or we are not uh, very um, aware of what our culture is having to offer to others. When you know your culture, when you know where you're coming from, you're gonna be able to feel proud and feel like I have, I, I have something to, to give to others. So don't be afraid of explore. Um, I, in my classes always, I, mm -hmm. I teach them how to explore their own culture. So in that way they can feel pride, you know, and then they yeah. can uh, share with others and see that they can make a difference Wonderful. with their own culture. Well, it's wonderful to hear that that support is available here at MATC for um, all students. Yes. It Thank is. you so it's much great. for chatting with us today. Thank you for having me and have a good day. 
Promoting and understanding cultural diversity is incredibly important. Here at MATC, we're dedicated to serving students through recruitment and retention services. Our field correspondent, Tyler Eyerly, joins us live from the M Building in room 238 to show us exactly where we can find these services. Thanks, Hannah. I'm here in room M238, as you said, the Multicultural Student Services Office, and I am here with Janae Austin, Director of District-Wide Advising. Janae, how are you? Good, and yourself? I'm great, I'm great. How would you define your role as uh, District-Wide Advising? Absolutely. So um, I have the honor of leading all advising initiatives here at Milwaukee Area Technical College. Um, I am responsible for um, making sure that our students are receiving um, the correct information in order to progress in their academic programs. And so I work alongside a great team of professional advisors, um, both here in the Multicultural uh, Student Service Center, also in our general advising office, and last but not least, in our academic and career pathways. And so all professional advisors work closely with our students from the start of their program until the end. That's awesome. Uh, how would you define the daily activities that go on here in this office? Absolutely. So Multicultural Student Service uh, is a unique space for all students to come and feel supported, both academically and non-academically. Um, the Multicultural Student um, Center is uh, here for all students and our multicultural advisors target students of underrepresented groups, African American students, Southeast Asian students, Latinx students, uh, Native American students. These are students who historically have um, significant academic gaps um, compared to their um, counterpart. And so uh, the advisors are tasked with ensuring that those gaps um, are, are closed and those students are receiving the resources that they need in order to progress at a timely rate in order to graduate. So what are the, some of those uh, services that are offered here? What, what can students uh, find when, when they come here? Absolutely. And so as stated before, we are at the downtown campus in the main building on the second floor at M238. You will find a safe space to come and speak with someone about any challenges you may be experiencing. Again, it could be academic or not academic challenges that you wish to talk to someone about. You will find a person that could connect you to resources, both internally and externally. You will find academic support here. We have a computer lab designed just for our students to come and be able to do their homework. If they need to log into class, meet with an instructor for um, virtual hours, uh, you can do that right here in our office. If you need to come and have a meal, we have snacks here for students. If you need to come here and use our telephones to be able to make an important phone call to take care of any business, um, you are allowed to do that as well. We also have a conference room that our student groups are allowed to use. And so we do have some of our multicultural student groups who will come here and use our conference room for meeting space. All right, well, Janae, thank you so much for your time. We're gonna send it back to you now, Hannah. Thanks for the tour, Tyler. When it comes to taxes, most student, students do not understand how to do their own. Taxes are something that everyone will have to do in the future, and it's important to know how to do your own. La Casa de Esperanza is partnering, partnering with MATC to allow students free tax services to help them file their taxes. But first, MAC, MATC's Hispanic Serving Institution Task Force held a recent career opportunities conference called Searching and Reaching Your Dreams. It was designed for Latinx students who want to explore different career opportunities and pathways. If you... Hispanic of Milwaukee is an organization that works with Hispanic students to prepare them for the job market. They have partnered with MATC to prepare Latinx students here. The goal of this event is uh, help the students to find the path for um, a job. Um, many of them, you know, they have they have been enrolled in a in a program. Um, they are trying to complete the program, but what is the next step? And the next step is to find a job. And then we want to encourage the students and those who are not students to to learn how to go to the job market. But so right now we are concentrated in, in this event and see how it goes. 
And of course, we're going to start doing follow-ups with the students from this event and, um, and see how what else the students will need. Um, this event is going to be important to see what else they need um, because they're going to have the opportunity to talk about how they feel uh, when they are pursuing a two-year program or how they feel when they're pursuing a four-year program. And from there, we can start thinking about what, what other um, workshops or conferences we can uh, develop for them. They, they have a lot of speakers coming. Uh, for example, uh, I think in February, they have one speaker. Uh, and he was pretty good because uh, the students had a lot of questions about how I can feel, you know, more uh, comfortable when I'm applying a job. Many students, they said, uh, I, I see the description of the job, but many times I feel that I cannot apply because it doesn't fit. And in that workshop, we were able, oh, Prospanica and, and, and all the people who were participating, we were able to tell the students that sometimes that description is not exactly what they have to uh, think is the only way to get the job. And it depends how they're gonna apply and how they're gonna write their resume, how they're gonna write their cover letter. Find your program, finish your program, and then get the job. And that's what we want them because that's the final, you know, uh, goal for them to get a job and get a better uh, life, a better opportunities. So that's why it's called Change Your Dreams because uh, the dream is to get a job that is going to give me the opportunity to improve my life. My standard of living is going to be better than before. For more information on upcoming events, go to perspanica.org slash students. La Casa de Esperanza is partnering with MATC to help students with their taxes and teach them how to do them by themselves. They help families that are eligible for the Earned Income Tax Credit and help them take advantage of the credit, which often results in $1,000 or more in refunds. So we offer free tax preparation um, as well as other financial services um, such as credit coaching, um, budgeting, we have a homeowners program as well, and we also offer um, free certification training for OSHA 10 and forklift training. For college students, money can play a big role in the decisions they make. Free things are always a good thing to take advantage of when you are a college student. Um, I would say one of the biggest benefits is that um, all of the services that we offer here are free. Um, so um, anytime you come in for some help, there's not going to be a charge. And then another benefit would be um, that we offer so many different services. So when you come in for one, we're going to try to find um, other things that will help benefit you. Um, we've been running our VITA site for about 15 years now, um, and it's a great program that the IRS provides um, to different communities. Um, so it's always been available for students and, and for anyone who's under the income of 60 or 70,000. Learning how to do your own taxes is an essential life skill that they might not always teach you in school. So um, one, we also partner with a lot of students and interns um, for volunteer credit or for other things like that. Um, so it's, you know, it's a great way to give back to the community if you're looking to kind of get experience in tax preparation or just experience in working with people. Um, in terms of like clients, I think, a lot of students don't have a lot of um, experience doing their taxes by themselves. Um, a lot of college students, they still have their parents do their taxes for them. Um, so it's just a great way to learn kind of how to do that yourself. It's, it's a life skill that's important for everyone to know. And it's not really something that they teach you a lot about in school. So um, it's kind of nice being able to provide that education portion to it um, and, and let them know about what taxes are and um, why you would owe taxes or why you get a refund and, and just in general how the system kind of works. So you can go to our website, lacasadeesperanza.org um, and if you go to our Center for Financial Stability page, 
you'll see all of our different financial services. Um, and if you specifically go to our VITA page, um, you're going to see information about how to sign up for a tax appointment, um, as well as our virtual tax preparation as well. La Casa de Esperanza is also available for students online. If you do not feel comfortable meeting face-to-face, -face, you can set up a virtual meeting and get the help you need. If you need help with your taxes, the people over at La Casa de Esperanza are a great group of people and can help you in many ways. In addition to learning how to do your taxes, cooking at home is a great way to save money. Check out this great St. Patrick's Day themed breakfast Chef James has prepared for us. Hey, today we will be making St. Patty's Day inspired waffles. How else to start off a great St. Patrick's Day than with some St. Patrick's waffles? Here we have all our ingredients. You will need two cups of pancake mix, any mix that you like, one and a half cups of water, two to three drops of green food coloring, a half a stick of butter or a nonstick spray, and whatever toppings you choose. You're also going to need a waffle maker, a mixing bowl, and a mixing utensil. First, you're gonna preheat your waffle maker. Then, you're gonna add your two cups of mix, your water, and your food coloring. Err on the side of too much rather than too little because it's nice to have a strikingly green color. Then you're gonna mix it all together until you basically have a batter that is free of like large lumps or any big clumps of powder, but isn't completely smooth. You don't wanna mix out all of the lumps because that's what gives it like fluffiness when it cooks. Once everything is all mixed together, you're going to add either a little bit of butter or your spray to your waffle maker. Oof. <laughs> then you want to pour a little less than a half a cup of the mix onto the buttered waffle maker. Close it up, flip it, and now we wait. Every waffle maker is a little bit different. Sometimes it'll give you a light, sometimes a ding. You're just gonna wanna make sure you know how yours works and how you can cook it for your preference. Now earlier, I was, I, we, I said any mix you'd like for this, for this waffle, and I meant it. You can do a box mix off the shelf, or you can mix one at home. And if you don't have a waffle mix, Here's the secret, pancake mix and waffle mix are the same mix. You just put one on a pancake, uh, like a griddle, and one in a waffle maker. Another tip, if you get a box mix, if you add a little bit of baking soda and some vanilla, it makes it fluffier and yummier. Now, while it's cooking, you can basically choose any toppings you'd like for your waffle. Here are a few of my favorites. We've got some nice berries, we've got some syrup, we've got peanut butter and chocolate but you can also do any other type of fresh fruit or some uh, whipped cream. It's always a hit. Mix and match and the sky's the limit. So once now we're almost done with the cooking, I'll give you a couple little waffle facts. Did you know that waffles have been around since the 14th century? That's the 1300s if you weren't sure. Wow. And the world's biggest waffle is currently at eight feet long. Imagine fitting that on your kitchen counter. <laughs> now it's time to open up our waffle maker. Now, if you don't spray it entirely good enough, it might stick and that's okay. The nice thing about waffles is even if they don't come out 
entirely whole, they will still taste delicious. And really, that's the big uh, lesson to take away from cooking. Now, we're gonna take the waffle out as carefully as we can. You don't wanna burn yourself. And then we'll add the toppings. After we leave it on the plate to cool, and even if it turns out a little lumpy, it's okay, because you can still put the toppings you like, and it'll still taste delicious. Now I've chosen what I like the most, and I can't wait to enjoy it. Hannah, I'll have yours ready and warm for you, and hopefully it'll be a little better shape than this. <laughs> Thanks, James. That waffle look magically delicious. My favorite type of waffles are strawberries. I will definitely be making this tomorrow morning. In the meantime, Hannah has some dates for you to put in your calendar. Check out this quick MATC Minute. As of this week, Tuesday marks the end of the first quarter, so make sure those grades are in order by visiting your campus counselor or by visiting Blackboard to view your grades. This Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, where we celebrate the luck of the Irish. Make sure you maintain social distancing, and we hope you have fun and stay safe. Also this week, you can take a breather because Wednesday and Thursday, there are no classes due to student non-contact day. So you can celebrate your St. Patrick's Day without worrying about missing class. And Thursday is MATC's Career Hub, where you can hear from your female peers in non-traditional programs, learn about their dreams, what their career plans are, and what allows them to stay strong in career paths that are typically male-dominated. Back to you, Mariela. As you can see, I'm all ready for St. Patrick Day. I'm so excited. No school on Wednesday and Thursday, and I know just what I'm going to do. A student producer, Corey Newsom, take us on a tour of Easterbrook Park, and it shows some of the beautiful sights and history it contains. Newsom, and this is a hidden Jim K.E. Esterbrook Park has a lot of history here. Esterbrook was named in honor of Charles Esterbrook, a Milwaukee lawyer who had created Milwaukee County Commission and also served as his first secretary. Esterbrook Park has history from the Old Sox Trail down to Bathing Beach. Esterbrook Park has a lot of fun and entertaining activities to do like playing soccer, or going fishing, walking next to the river on the trail, or just sit and watch the waterfall. You can either bring your pet. Just remember to bring a leash. Bags are provided. Disc golf is a popular game down here at Esbrook Park. You should come check it out. Secret skateboard area for all the skateboard lovers out there. Can't forget about Beer Garden, the first public beer garden since the prohibition in the USA. I'm student producer Corey Nusa, and that was a hidden Jim K.E. See ya! That's all for this episode of MATC Now. Remember, there are lots of different cultures all around us, and it is our responsibility to get to know them and understand them the best we can. And remember, MATC is here for all your needs culturally and diversively. Don't forget to check out the wide variety of services offered by the Multicultural Services Department and the Bilingual Programs and Services Department. Thanks again to Dr. Solano and Mariela Godinez Munoz for spending the morning with us. I'm still Hannah Tattenen. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>